Hey guys, what's going on? Bob here for Buttered Popcorn Reviews. Coming to you from a slightly different area today. I uh, haven't had much time to do uh, some of the video reviews I want, so I'm taking every spare moment and I am doing a review today from my office during my lunch break. So that's how you know when you've uh, got it made. You have your own office and enough quiet time to do this. So uh, today I want to talk about the ninth film in the Quentin Tarantino universe. We're talking about Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Uh, this movie came out last week, stars every single person uh, on the face of the planet. Uh, of course, it's got uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, Brad Pitt, Margot Robbie um, are the main stars. We've also got a, a slew of others. Uh, I mean, as is the case with a lot of uh, Tarantino's movies, he has a lot of friends. He has a lot of uh, respect for a lot of different actors, so he gets a bunch of people in. So we've also got Emile Hirsch is in this movie. Um, Timothy Oliphant from Justified, who's one of my all-time favorite actors, is in it minimally. Um, in fact, a lot of these people, even the big names, Dakota Fanning is in this movie, Bruce Dern, Luke Perry, um, Al Pacino, all these people are in this movie, and um, all of them for very limited screen time. Um, and the movie is pushing three hours long. It's it's two hours, I think I want to say it's about two hours and 45 minutes, uh, maybe two hours and 50 minutes, right around there. Um, and... I'm going to just go right out and say that this is absolutely the best movie I've seen all year. It was one of my most anticipated movies of the year, so I was, uh, I've been looking forward to this ever since I heard about it. Um, I'm a mid-range fan of Tarantino's movies. I like all of his movies. I absolutely love Pulp Fiction, and I love Django Unchained. Um, I love The Hateful Eight, too. I, I mean, he, he's made some absolutely great movies. Um, and I was really looking forward to this one because just the whole idea of the movie um, is very appealing to me. I have always been a fan of movies about movies. This is um, about Hollywood. It actually focuses more on, on television than movies. Uh, so basically, the plot of the movie um, is DiCaprio plays a, um, an old Western actor... Uh, named Rick Dalton, and in the 1950s, he had a hit TV uh, series, a hit Western, and was, uh, you know, like a big star on television, and we are, you know, throughout the story, we're, we're told that, um, you know, at some point, he decided he wanted to try his hand at movies, which effectively almost ruined, uh, it didn't go well, and it kind of ruined his TV career, so for the last several years, um, after his hit TV show ended, he's just been doing a lot of guest spots on uh, on other TV shows. Um, so the story kind of follows him and Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt plays Cliff Booth, who uh, Brad Pitt is supposed to be DiCaprio's uh, stuntman. So they've been working together for years. Um, it was, you know, and as is the case with a lot of actors, even now, their stuntmen come with them and go to all different, um, you know, go to every shoot that they're on. Because once you find a good stuntman who looks like you and can do the work, uh, they stick with them, especially if they're, you know, have a good camaraderie. And that's the thing here. So Brad Pitt and Leonardo DiCaprio are, you know, inseparable, uh, you know, they're best friends. So the movie takes place in 1968, 60, uh, 68, 69. Um, and revolves heavily around the story, that story, um, and in a similar way of Pulp Fiction, although not not exactly, um, it's it's a little, it's not not non-linear like Pulp Fiction, but it does have a lot of offshoot stories. So one of the other stories that we follow um, pretty closely is Margot Robbie's character. Uh, she plays Sharon Tate. Of course, Sharon Tate was a real actress who um, was murdered by the Manson family. So the story follows her character as well um and leads up you know that it also includes the manson family um in the film as well so there is a lot of um there there is a lot of uh different things going on at once and it, with a two hour and 50 minute runtime um you know you're it's expected i think but the thing is, the movie doesn't feel like a two hour and 45 minute, two hour and 50 minute movie. I mean, it flew by. And even though there is a lot of, um, there's a lot of scenes that aren't really 
um, furthering necessary of the story because we follow them a lot. You know, there's a whole scene, for example, and it is a it is a great scene where um, DiCaprio and Brad Pitt are um, watching, uh, you know, a live airing of the show FBI, uh, where DiCaprio's Rick Dalton character is supposed to have just had a guest spot. So they're watching the show and it's maybe a, a, you know, it's probably a five to seven minute scene and they're kind of like doing a running commentary on the show and it's funny. Um, one of the scenes that they show in the, uh, the original, uh, theatrical trailer was a scene with, um, Bruce Lee, um, who's played by Mike Moe in the film. And, you know, that's a 10 minute scene where, um, you know, and it's, it's just a, uh, in the film, it's, it's actually just a, a daydream really that one of the other characters is having. So, but it's hilarious. So it's like little scenes like that where, um, you know, it, it isn't necessarily driving the whole plot of the movie, but they're, they're just great. So the film goes on for, I mean, it's, it's a lot of, um, I'm I'm such a huge fan of movies about movies and about making movies and like movie magic and this follows that very well even though you know even though Rick Dalton is a TV actor it's still the same idea um, and you know he does and it's just his interaction uh, on set it's just the the whole the the performances are just uh, amazing across the board I, I'm a, such a huge DiCaprio fan I I honestly believe that he's um, you know, the best actor working today by far. Everything that he does is great. Him and Brad Pitt carry this movie so well. Um, they're in such a majority of the film and both of them are just, they're just phenomenal uh, throughout the movie. Margot Robbie is great too. She's in it a lot less. She doesn't have a lot of screen time and she doesn't have a lot of um, even dialogue in the in the scenes that she's in. Um you know, and even big stars like Al Pacino, uh, he, he plays uh, Marvin Schwartz, who is supposed to be, um, you know, DiCaprio's um, kind of manager or agent, or he's, or he's trying to be, um, you know, and he's got limited time. And it's, but everybody, everybody in this movie is just absolutely amazing. Um, so this movie cost, uh, cost somewhere in the nature of around, uh, around $90 million to make. Um, I believe that it's, Tarantino's most expensive movie or one of them um and what I I've actually was reading about this is that it, it it's gonna have to hit around 400 million dollars at the box office just to break even and I don't know if it will um so it's it's one of those um things where it really it really seems like there's such a huge this is an Oscar this is an Oscar caliber film I mean it was it's it, if it doesn't get nominated for Best Picture, if it doesn't get nominated for Best um, best Original Screenplay, if it doesn't get nominated for Best Cinematography, I would be very surprised. Um, I would love to see DiCaprio get another at least Oscar nom. Brad Pitt should get an Oscar nom for this. Um, I have a, a friend who said that he even believes that Margot Robbie would, would get, uh, Margot Robbie would get a, a nomination at least, um, just because the Academy really loves uh, movies about the gold... This, so this film was was pushed a lot as being about the golden age of um, of cinema. It's really not the golden age would have would have already been over by this. But this this film focuses very heavily on on uh, it's a, it's very negative. Uh, it's well, it's pretty positive about the film industry, um, but it's very it's very negative about hippies. So if there's one thing you'll find watching this movie is that Quentin Tarantino absolutely hates hippies, um, or he specifically hates. Manson family, the Manson family and Manson family hippies. They they rag on hippies throughout this entire film. Um, so yeah, Tarantino definitely hated, definitely hates hippies. Um, he certainly loves feet. I mean, I guess it's a. I, I didn't know this, but I guess it's a pretty well known fact that that Tarantino has a has a foot fetish and it's on display very well in this movie for sure. Any time that there's a chance to have a have one of the actresses not have shoes on and throw her feet right directly into the camera, uh, Tarantino does it. So you know, but um, and then the other thing is that he does not. There's not a score. Well, there is a, a little bit of a score to this movie, but um, much like um, you know, I, I feel like there's some directors who really do um very well using pop music to score their movies or or to work with scenes and i think that tarantino is one of those guys i think he's one of the best at it um you know uh, it every scene uses specific pop music from the era 
um, and sometimes mul you know multiple songs through a scene, and I think it works very very well. I think he's one of the best at it. I think Martin Scorsese is is uh, certainly right up there as one of the best at pop music use of pop music in their films, and I'm probably a little biased, but I think John Waters does it the best. Um, I think that using pop music and using it well in a movie is is hard. Um, you know, it isn't just about having a club scene or a, or a party scene and having a certain song in the background. There's just um, a lot. Of, it's using it's using songs uh, well to fit the 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 style of the film, the setting of the film, the narrative of the film. And I think um, that Tarantino absolutely hit the nail on the head here with this uh, with this whole entire soundtrack. I think it's phenomenal. Um, so yeah. Anyway, I mean, there's the there's not much that I personally felt like was, was negative about the film. Um, I think that, you know, there, there's definitely some fat that maybe could have been trimmed a little bit to make the movie a little bit tighter, but I'm such a fan of, um, long, you know, Tarantino's specific, the cinematography in this movie is beautiful. And some of these long, um, shots, drawn out shots of like the LA strip and just, it, the way that everything looks in this movie is just so gorgeous. I, I cannot say enough that if you if you're interested in even slightly in seeing this movie, you should see it theatrically. Um, between the sound and and the the scope of the movie and the look of the movie, um, it's great. And I loved seeing it with the with an audience. This is the first movie I have seen in the theater in a very long time where the audience stood up and clapped at the end. I saw this uh, movie over the over this um past week um and it was fairly busy for a monday night there's probably 50 60 people in the theater um when i saw it on a on a on an eight o'clock show on a monday night for a three-hour movie it was a lot of people in there and uh people stood up and clapped at the end i'm that's that's not me that's not what i do but uh yeah i mean and and i'll tell you the i f the comedy aspect keeps the movie going even on those slower scenes the acting keeps the movie going, but the th the third act, the ending, the final probably 20 minutes of the movie, maybe a little bit, give or take, 20 to 30 minutes of the movie, um, absolutely just blew me away. It, it rocked. It just, that's the only way I can describe it. The ending of the movie absolutely fucking rocked. It was so, um, I mean, it's reminiscent of another... Tarantino movie and I, I don't want to say too much because I don't want to give it away um, you know the movie as I said it revolves around Sharon Tate and the Manson family and so when you're watching the film even though um, even though the the movie itself is not based around um, you know real uh, real characters um, in every aspect, you know, um, Rick Dalton and Cliff Booth are not real. I don't, geez, I don't, they're not real people. I don't think they're real people. Um, but, you know, because Sharon Tate is a real person and they do, they kind of incorporate the, the fake and the real people. Um, you know, Dakota Fanning plays Squeaky. Squeaky is a real, was a real member of the Manson family. Um, you know, Margot Robbie with Sharon Tate is a real person. Um, I'm trying to think of who... Who play? I mean, we've got people in here. Damian Lewis plays Steve McQueen, obviously a real person. Um, I'm not sure this actor. I've never seen him before. Rafal. I'm going to massacre this last name. Rafal Zawarucha. Zawarucha. He plays Roman Polanski, um, who of course was married to Sharon Tate. So a lot of these people are playing real, real, uh, you know, his historical, you know, characters, real people uh, in the movie. So when you're watching the film, um, following the story, you kind of realize um, where it might be headed. Um, so I don't want to give anything really away about the ending, but it just blew me away. It, it, it was so good and so surprising, um, really, that I, I, want, I almost want to go see this movie again in the theater. I have not seen a movie twice in the theater in a long time. Um, and I almost want to go see it one more time. Um, at least before it leaves the theaters. But at the same time, I'm also really hoping that um, there's an extended director's cut of this movie when it comes out on Blu-ray uh, and 4K, probably either later this year, or the beginning of next year, however long it lasts. But uh, I, I mean, like I said, two hours, 45 minutes, and it did not feel like that at all. Um, and I would be, I would love to see some more stuff that was cut. There's, there's 
full people who were cut out of the movie completely. Um, and it's funny because if you're watching the end credits, they're doing it and it actually says, um, you know, part of the crew, they're listing all the people and it says Tim Roth, who of course is in, uh, is in other, uh, Tarantino, it says Tim Roth and in parentheses it says cut because they took his scene out completely. So there's a lot of footage um, to this movie that is not even, it's not even in it. So there's, there's more to, to be, um, there's more to be, um, seen for sure. And just like they did with the Hateful Eight, where they, uh, recently within the last couple of months, they released an extended, um, version of the Hateful Eight on Netflix, broken up into series. Even if we, uh, or into different episodes to kind of make a series, even if we got something like that, I'd be, um, I'd kind of be all for it. So, uh, yeah, no, I have highly recommend this movie. It's absolutely my favorite movie of the year so far. Like I said, it was one of my most anticipated um, movies, and I think it lived up to my expectations in every way possible. It's just such a great movie. The, the um, you know, it, it is probably his weakest uh, dialogue-wise, um, you know, because Tarantino is a very, very good writer. He's a very good, very good with dialogue and, and banter and this one has probably the weakest but the, the the presentation of the movie and the the performances of all the actors in this movie carried it anyway um you know everybody was just so good kurt russell plays randy um who was a like a stuntman coordinator on one of the on one of the uh shows that uh that you know dicaprio that Dalton is supposed to be working on um and then he actually narrates uh, some of the bit at the end too, uh, and he was just great. I'm actually scrolling through. I'm scrolling through this right now and looking at some of this. Like rumor, Will, uh, some of these people I didn't even remember being in it. Rumor Willis, who is um, of course Bruce Willis and Demi Moore's daughter, is in this uh, film. Um, this Harley Quinn Smith, who is uh, Kevin Smith's daughter, is in this movie. Didn't even realize she was in it. Lena Dunham, who I can't stand uh, anyway, but she's in this movie. Um, there's just so many, um, I can't even, there's, there's hundreds of people in this movie and, and so many, such a large portion of the cast are so recognizable though. Um, I will say that, um, there's an actress in this, Julia Butters, who plays Trudy, who's a, a young girl. Um, she's the one, if you've seen the trailer where she leans into DiCaprio and says, that's the best acting I've ever seen. She actually has more screen time than even Margot Robbie does. I mean, she, and, but she was great. Um, I've ne I don't know what she's, if she's been, what she's been in. I, I don't think I've ever seen her before. Let's take a look at this real quick. Nothing I've ever seen. It looks like she was on Transparent and Criminal Minds and has done some one-off stuff. She was phenomenal and she's, uh, 10 years old. Uh, it just, yeah, the, the acting in this, um, was fantastic. And I, I really, I really think that that's really kind of what, um, what keeps the movie go driving throughout the whole is the performance. It's just just so great. Um, so anyway, that's pretty much all I want to say about that, I guess. I, I highly recommend going to see this movie. Check it out in the theater. Check it out twice in the theater. Um, I think if you're a fan of Tarantino and you know what you're getting into, you'll like it. If you're a fan of DiCaprio or Brad Pitt, you'll like it um, for sure. I mean, it's just uh, some of the some of the best work that I've seen from Brad Pitt in a very long time. Um, you know, he's a, he's kind of a badass in the movie, uh, too, which you don't get to see a lot. He plays a lot of the, uh, the pretty boy, uh, you know, a lot of the times, and this is a little bit different. So, um, for sure, uh, check it out. Uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is, uh, still in theaters right now. It just came out last week. So, yeah, check it out for sure. Uh, and while you're checking that out, before you do, you can also check us out at uh, facebook.com slash official buttered popcorn, where we do, uh, where you can follow along with all of us stuff on there. You can check out our website, buttered-popcorn.com right here. And uh, we do all movie reviews, uh, Blu-ray and 4K release news and reviews and all sorts of great stuff on there. So uh, definitely check it out there. And thanks very much for watching and I will catch you next time.